there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is Sat Chat time, and guys, I really don't have a clue what I'm going to talk about this week, and uh, we're only nine seconds in. It's still a lot of time to film. Oh my goodness, it is 5.04 Friday afternoon, evening. I, I want to call it afternoon because I was just upstairs, you know, putting on my face, and uh, and it was still light out, so that's good. And I noticed, like, this morning I woke up and it was like 5.30, and it was starting to become light out so the days are even longer i'm very excited about that um i've been thinking about getting my arrow garden out and growing some basil or something i don't know i've um my sister got me an arrow garden probably gosh it was probably like it was over 10 years ago and it was really neat i really liked having it going but um i don't recall it like yielding that much for the amount of like work and expense and stuff like to buy the pods and stuff i don't think i actually bought any extra pods i think i just used up what came with the kit and then um then i didn't get anything else but then i was thinking actually my sister had hers going and i was like oh that's nice to see something growing of course my sister could like throw seeds over her shoulder into a pit of dirt and she would have a beautiful garden she's got the green thumb i don't have that my mother has it my father's parents were farmers so it's like i don't know how this gene has bypassed me, but um, it, both sides of the family have green thumbs and I don't. Um, but I'm thinking that the arrow garden is pretty like enclosed ecosystem and I could get something to grow. So I'm thinking that I would like to do basil and I was looking on Amazon today and I was, and I was trying to find like, I just want basil actually, I just want to have a pesto garden, but I couldn't find just basil. They had like an herb assortment and they had like uh, lettuces that you could get, assortment of greens. They had like peppers and tomatoes. They also had flowers and I was thinking, well, maybe... Maybe I'd want to go flowers. That would be so cheerful to flowers growing in the arrow garden, but it's not very practical because I don't, they're probably not going to bloom that long and then they'll just be, you know, just go to waste at least if I did basil. And even if I got a ton of basil, because my sister's like, oh, you're going to get way too much and you can, won't be able to use it. And I'm like, you've obviously never seen me garden. I've never in my life gotten way too much of anything that I've attempted to grow. So um, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I'm going to see if I can just find a place that will just sell basil. <laughs> just I just want basil. I got to see. I don't remember how many um, holes were in my arrow garden. I don't know if it was like 10. I can't remember. I have to go get it out of the garage. But um, I just want to grow basil. I, just, I think that would be great. Do pesto. And even if I had a bumper crop of pesto, I could make extra and freeze it. I've seen people do that. I've never had extra pesto before. It always gets eaten. Everybody loves pesto. Well, not everybody. Me and the girls really love pesto, um, and we can definitely go through it. And I can make it low fat. I, I get this stuff called Better Than Bullion, the vegetarian kind, and I use that in place of oil if I'm going to go low fat and low calorie, and I use nutritional yeast instead of cheese. And I mean, I do use nuts, but you know what? I don't use pine nuts. I usually use like whatever, like cashews or peanuts because you know I always have it peanuts are cheap and I don't really notice a difference use garlic um so maybe what I have is nothing <laughs> like what anybody else would call pesto but it is so delicious and just tons and tons of basil so good um but like I could freeze in ice cube trays because I have a bunch of ice cube trays that I bought thinking that I'm going to use these for palettes and classes and um well pandemic and also I, I, they're just too big. They're too big to use for palettes. And then I also got some mini ice cube trays, which are too small for anything. I don't know why. I just thought they'd be great to make cute little mini palettes. That was not a good, that was not a good purchase. But man, Amazon always gets me. So while I'm online looking for something completely like virtuous, I always get like pulled down the little rabbit hole of like, ooh, art supplies I haven't seen before. So um, I've been kind of off the rails and I'm a little bit ashamed of it. I need to I need to get on the rails for so many things. I need to get on the rails. I need to get off the white flower because I've just felt it's so nice to have a big bagel for breakfast and to have a sandwich for lunch and then to have pasta or something. Um, but so I'm I'm really trying to uh, to cut back on the white flour. I made a big thing of oatmeal this morning to split with Maisie, and you know chopped up a bun. And actually, I didn't do a whole serving of oatmeal. I did like I did less than two servings for us to split because I was cutting up an apple and I was going to throw in a bunch of strawberries and and blueberries and chia seeds. Um, so I didn't want to have. I'm like I'm that's going to be way too much food. We won't eat it. And um, I took her to school, and honestly, I was home. I got home, took the dog for a walk, and I'm walking the dog and thinking, hmm, I'm hungry. What am I gonna have for breakfast? It's like I just had breakfast like an hour ago. Why am I hungry? So I ended up having a piece of toast because I was hungry. It's like I'm gonna get to work, and I'm not having lunch at like 9:20 in the morning. So um, so I had a piece of toast, and then I had a sandwich for lunch because I just felt like it. 
<laughs> white bread, no less. It's that really good, like, artisan, like, I think it's like Sara Lee or Nature's Own or something, but it's like this really thick, sliced, horrible, delicious white bread. And it says, like, harvest grains or something. There's like, it's not whole grain, but it's so delicious. And, uh, but, you know, it's 5.09 and I'm not, like, dying for dinner yet, so, um, so it's alright. I mean, it had, like, tofurkey in it, so it's not like it was, like, complete junk, but trying to get away from the trash and, uh, get back on the rails. So, um, last week, actually, this is a justified purchase. I'm going to tell you this right now. It was justified. Um, upstairs on my fun art desk, it's, it's right next to my balcony in the warm weather. I love to go sit out on the balcony and just create art. Um, and sometimes I'm just working out ideas up there. I just feel like drawing and I don't want to film it. I just want to like just relax and draw or something. But this is kind of hard when what you do for a living is what you do for fun too, you know. Um, so I have all my really short Prismacolors up there. So they're too short to go. This is a spice rack by the way. Oh, let me turn this around. Everyone, every week I have at least one person ask me, what do you have your color pencils in? It's a spice rack. I got this in the mall like oh back in the 90s from a store called Lecter's and it's meant to um it was meant to either hang on the wall or sit on its side and it had little glass jars and I still have the jars and actually used to store buttons in the jars um because I could see them all and it was handy my buttons color coordinated but I have them in an advent calendar now but anyway um but I tip this on I tip this on its back and it's great because it's kind of like angled a bit and I can the layers in back, I can see the way, I don't know, it's not really stadium seating, but I can kind of see what's in everything, so I have my, I have a set of watercolor pencils here, my prism colors there, I've got my color erase for like sketching under markers, because they just kind of disappear, and I can, you can erase them if you do make a really bad mistake, I usually don't end up erasing them, and you know, just a, a variety of things, um, but that's what that is, and it's difficult to find, somebody found one, I think it was Sandy from Crafting for Almost Everyone, found one, and she shared a link to me because she, she thought it was funny, she found one on eBay and it was brown, and it, they wanted like 60 bucks or something for it, it's like, it's plastic guys, it's nothing to write home about, but it, all, it works really well, um, but when my pencils get shorter than like, uh, five inches, it's tough to see them in there. So upstairs, I took all my short Prismacolors and I put them in little little Dollar Tree baskets upstairs. I stack, I just stack and nest them in one another so I can lay them out when I want to use them. It's not as nice as that because I like having, you can just see so much more and have so much more in a smaller square footage, but, um, but it works. But I had a few, I had some, like I bought um, pencil extenders here and there, and I just have way too many short pencils that need the extenders. So I was uh, looking around on Amazon and I found this is the cheapest I've ever found a set of 24 pencil extenders for under 12 bucks. And I'll link that down below. And um, I re and I figured, well, I recognize these because these are the ones that I like. I bought them from like the Clover Company, but I think it was like five dollars for three, um, and they were great. And I was going to reorder, but. Um, but I was like, geez, this is like 50 cents a piece. So even if only the, if only I liked the metal ones and the wooden ones were crap, still it's cheaper than buying them the way that I was getting them. Um, so I think that these wooden ones will work for my older Barrel and Sanford Prismacolors because they're a little bit thicker. They got a little bit smaller when Newell Rubbermaid moved, moved the factory to Mexico. So the ones I have now are just a little bit thinner. They're too thin for these to really hold securely, but these will hold any of my Derwent shorties or um, like this one right here because I keep my pastel pencils and it won't be for long because they'll get too short but I don't like I don't lay down a lot of stuff with the pastel pencils I'm more using them for detail so they don't need to be sharpened too often they don't wear down too quickly so I have them in this I just like the artwork on this tomato can for some reason I thought it was cute and I like a little splash of color so um, that that will fit these uh, this is in one of my um, Van Gogh pastel pencils that I have in here and it's almost like it's kind of weird because um, they, they almost seem like they're too fat, and I think it's because it's got the capped ends. It almost seems like it's too fat, but I can shove it right in there and just pull the collar up a little bit. It gets it in there nice and snug, so that's going to keep those above the, the line there. So if those don't work on my old Prismacolors upstairs, then uh, that's fine because I can use them my Derwent's and other like pencils that are a little bit thicker. I did feel like the Prismacolors got a little bit skinnier, but it wasn't enough to... Um, it would it still they still have been the same hole in the pencil sharpener, so it wasn't enough to like tell there, but it was definitely enough when I uh, tried putting them in that, those pencil extenders. But anyway, that's a really good deal if you need some, or if you're a teacher and you have a classroom full of kids and you want to, you know, want them to get the most, you know, especially if you're a school teacher and you know you only have so much of a budget, then you can extend those colored pencils until they're uh, completely used up. I don't know if crayons would go in there. I think it might. I think it might kind of make a mess, like on these 
but it might, they might work. They might work fine for crayons. I'm just thinking school teachers. But, um, but anyway, I thought that was quite a steal. Uh, so then my not so justified purchases were, uh, and one has been refunded, so I don't know if it like went out of stock and they're going to cancel my order or if I'll get it. I'm not sure, but I've been seeing, I, I, I like to watch reviews, especially products that I've already reviewed just to see what other people think about them, which has brought me down the rabbit hole of adult coloring books. And, um, there's so many channels of adult coloring book artists and a lot of them will review the same artist pencils that we all know and love. It's just nice to get a different point of view and different perspective. I like to see what stampers think of a product. I like to think, see what scrapbookers think of a product. I like to see what artists in different um, disciplines think of a product. And it's also nice to see what adult coloring book enthusiasts think of a product because a lot of times they're working on a really slick paper and if their pencils don't have the color payout, then um, then they're not going to do the job for them. And I don't think there's anything wrong with using whatever you like for your hobby. I know some people will say, well, if you're just using a coloring book, you shouldn't use high-end pencils. Why not? Their hobby's just as valid as your hobby. Let them use whatever they want to do. It's their money. They bought and paid for it. They're putting the business. They're keeping the companies that we love in business. I say. The more the merrier. The more people want to enjoy those products the best. Anyway, there's been these square colored pencils floating around and I have resisted. I have resisted and I have resisted. I even put them in my safer later cart on Amazon. I'm like, they're just, they just look so cool. And honestly, what I was thinking is that they would be really nice photo props. So like if I'm doing like a photo and I'm doing colored pencils, I could like flip them around so you don't see any branding. It would just be really easy to photograph the square colored pencils. They wouldn't roll off on me and they wouldn't stay exactly where I put them and I wouldn't have to see the branding. Um, but I still, I'm like, no, Lindsay, no more budget pencils. You have enough. You have enough. Stop it. <laughs> Behave. But, uh, but then I saw this video and it was on this channel, Pamela's Passion for Pencils. And I was actually totally reorganizing the bathroom. I like pulled every, we have a pretty big vanity in the bathroom downstairs and the kids just chuck things in there. And like stuff that like my daughter Lila has so many toiletries and then she doesn't want them anymore. She kind of shoves them in there. And so there was so much stuff in there. So I pulled everything out and I scrubbed it all down and um, was decluttering and tossing expired sunscreen and all that stuff. Getting ready for spring basically. You know, I'm thinking, you know, I want to grow stuff. It's going to be spring, right? I got to get the sunscreens going. Um, It'll be here sometime, uh, and I was uh, I was listening to her review and while I was cleaning, and so as a treat, <laughs> I decided I would order them because she said they were in stock, and so uh, so I blame her, Pamela. <laughs> she probably doesn't watch this, but uh, but yeah, she's completely to blame for that purchase. And then um, I was on Amazon because I have this great book here, and I've actually I'm doing a couple videos using this. Um, this was a series of books. I think I got mine at Joanne Fabrics when they first came out, and it was a series called Memories of a Lifetime. And the thing that was neat about it was in the back of the mag of the book you have a CD, and the CD has all of the um, all of the artwork. So you could like print it out on like iron on transfers or you could print it out on, you could photocopy it, you could do whatever you want. You could use them in your collages and your scrapbooks, whatever. I, I was heavily into scrapbooking when I got these. Um, and I mean, I, I bought everyone I could find. I really love this series. And so there's a bunch of like vintage botanicals in this one, the Flowers of Nature one. So I kind of used, um, there was an illustration that had a bunch of different bulbs and I kind of mashed them up and did this, this tutorial is on my YouTube channel. Also, if you go to my blog, you can download the artwork, the line art that I drew, if you want to trace it or you just want to look at it better to, and so you can have it paused and you can draw it. You can see the pictures there or download them, whatever you like. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to do a botanical series. So anyway, I was on Amazon looking up that book to see if we could still buy it because often you can find these books that, um, these wonderful reference books and you can buy them used. They're like, you know, say you or I have books to sell, you know, you can sell them on Amazon. Different bookstores will also have their own little shops and stuff. Um, uh, thrift books is a place that I bought. I bought stuff through Amazon. It's come from thrift books. They're one of the sellers. Uh, but anyway, that book was there. So, oh, wonderful. While I was there, somehow I saw that Rosa Gallery watercolors were available and they are this brand from the Ukraine. And I saw an, <laughs> the other enabler in my life who doesn't know she's an enabler, but anyway, I saw a review a couple years ago from Kimberly Crick Art. Uh, she has a wonderful website that does have a lot of light fast information. And uh, she does these wonderful reviews on YouTube for watercolors. And she gets, oh my gosh, I could, I bet I could blame half of my novelty watercolor purchases on her because sure, she's really good and she does give you the straight scoop. But anyway, she had reviewed this set a couple of years ago and you could buy them. They were all sold out and you couldn't get them. And every once in a while I'd look and couldn't find them. 
and I even think I saw a couple other reviews on those too and they were all great reviews and they were very inexpensive watercolor out of the Ukraine and um, and then I saw them they were there they were there in a bunch of versions there was a set of 20 21 24 set of 24 whole pans for $33 and I think with tax and everything it was like 36 that's, that's what I bought that's what I paid then there was one that had 21 full pans and a tin and that was like 43 or probably would have been 45 after tax um, and there was also like smaller sets and I, I went for the I went for the best value which was the 24 full pans in a in a like a cardboard box because I'm like I've got ceramic palettes to use I've got tins I can make it work I can make it fit I'm, I'd rather pay less and get more colors than to have another tin because Lord knows I have enough tins I have enough of everything I shouldn't even be looking I shouldn't be allowed to look but anyways I bought them and they will be arriving sometime they were both them and the square pencils were not ready to ship yet they were kind of like order now more's on the way type deals um, but also those square pencils kept selling out and so like I kept like being like, oh, I'm gonna order them, then they be sold out. Then I'm like, well, now I really want them because they're sold out. <laughs> so, anyways, I got some budget Chinese square colored pencils on the way because I need more budget pencils, like a hole in the head. And I have, uh, I have some potentially really awesome uh, Ukrainian watercolors on the way. So, I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm looking forward. To, I love to try new things, especially. I really love to find like those diamonds in the rough. I love to find the really good quality, inexpensive stuff because I like to recommend them if they are good. Because everyone's every day, somebody's looking for is finding my channel and looking for a less expensive version because their budget doesn't allow or they don't know if they're going to like it. And I like to find things that aren't going to hamper your learning, um, but and aren't going to like be so precious. Because if you're a beginner and you're looking at a supply list that's going to cost you a couple hundred dollars just to get started, you're going to feel so precious about those paints that you might be afraid to use them. But if you can, you know, get the job done for like a fifth of the price, then you're gonna feel a lot more free to use them, I think anyway. At least I am, not everybody's like that. Some people don't even wanna bother unless they have the most expensive, best in their mind quality products because they think that if they don't, then that's gonna be the reason they fail. Um, and that's fine, get what you wanna give. It's your money, buy what you wanna buy. But um, I like to find those diamonds in the rough. And uh, so, so yeah, but really, seriously, I need to eat better, I need to stop buying crap. <laughs> Oh, I hope the camera's been in focus. I think I have it on auto today. I've been messing around with the settings uh, this week, and I've, I've been using the setting, because um, I was, was using one called, like, Cute Desserts or something like that, but it was too yellow. So I switched to this one called Clear Blue Sky, because Jason does my editing, my husband, and he's been saying that these things look too bright, but they're, like, not vivid. So I was figuring the bright blue sky would be good because I have all daylight lighting in here and if it's seeming too bright, then I'm hoping that kind of closes down the aperture of it on the camera so that more things, are, there's a uh, more deep depth of field, less shallow, you know, so more things are in focus. If I hold something up or I move something over there, that everything's in focus. That's what I'm hoping because I think that's a little bit better for an art tutorial to have uh, kind of everything in focus versus having some like dreamy depth of field type thing, which would be cuter if you're like, uh, probably like this, or talking like this, it'd be nice to have the background blurred, but, um, I like things to be in focus if I'm like holding it to the camera, <laughs> I guess. Um, uh, so what else? Oh, oh, so Sketchbook Sunday. I'm doing something different for Sketchbook Sunday this week. So I started this last week, and I have to say, I really like the way that the pastel mat looks. I, I like coming into my studio and seeing this finished on my easel. Um, I had done like those two flowers last week. I think I didn't film them. And then I thought, well, I asked you guys, would you like to see um, something like this for, let me set that right there. Yeah, do you like my tissue box? Look at this, it's like rainbow Adirondack chairs. Doesn't it feel like summer? I want some rainbow Adirondack chairs. We got a few, we got some brown ones that Jason made out of wood. Those are really nice. But I just like, oh, look at the rainbow. Ah, I'm so ready for summer, guys. Um, so anyway, yeah, I had done those two, done a crafty Zoom, just, you know, hanging around, playing with some pencils. So I asked if anybody wants a, like, a, a, like maybe a demo of a petal, because pastel mat takes forever. It takes forever to build up the layers on that. Um, so I have a real-time sketchbook Sunday coming up for you tomorrow where I'm going to be doing this bud and the branch and the leaves here. So it won't be those two petals, but it's the same idea for blending. Um, so that'll be there. I hope it's not too boring. I hope it's not too long. Um, 
it's funny, I always get these like notifications when I go, as soon as you go into YouTube to like as a creator to like upload or whatever, you lean on this place called your dashboard and it tells you like how your latest video is performing. And, um, and things have been going pretty good in the Dollar Tree videos, you know, I was doing the Dollar Tree haul, doing the Dollar Tree cards, doing all that, like stickers for the Dollar Tree, those videos, man, up and up and up, red, uh, green arrows pointing up as far as the eye can see. And then I post a watercolor tutorial and it's like, your viewers are not as interested in this as your other videos. Or, your video, your viewers are clicking on this, but they're not watching very long. Or it'll say, um, your subscribers are not clicking on this video, so we're not showing it to other people. You know, it's just like, you know, it's like, why? This is very unhelpful, YouTube. You're really bringing me down. You're really harshing my gig. You're bumming me out, YouTube. So if you like watercolor videos, I would really appreciate it if you watched them and shared them because, man, they're having a hard time. Hard time. YouTube doesn't like them. Where was that? It was here? I don't know. I had that in Oh, that's because I moved the camera. That's why it's not in frame anymore. But, um, but anyway, so I'm either tanking my channel or I'm putting something up that people will really like on Sunday. Who knows? Um, you just can't tell. It's hard to say. Oh yeah, speaking of, yeah, off the rails, just all that junk about the Dollar Tree. Although I have used a bunch of it and it's been pretty fun and it was only like 20 bucks. So, um, so that's not that's not too bad. I have I have used most of that stuff. I've tested out all the stamps. I haven't used all the stamps and projects, but they all they all worked. A little finicky on some of the ones that had more dark area. Um, definitely might need to rough them up with an eraser or an emery board, and definitely use pigment ink with them. But I think for a buck, yeah, the stamp definitely definitely worth it if you like those designs. Um, oh, something else I did because I I was actually it's so weird. So I will have like these days all the day that's really productive, and then the next day I'm like a complete waste. And then I'll have a productive day, and then I'll be a lazy bum. And then I'll have a productive day. So that's kind of how this week went. Monday was productive. Tuesday, lazy bum. Wednesday was really productive. I filmed like four things. Well, actually, Tuesday wasn't that bad. What I did, though, I wasted the day. Well, not really waste, because I was getting used to the, that fan. Remember the cute palette I showed you? The fan watercolors? I'll have a review for that next week. But, um, so I was, I wanted to do, this is before I decided I'm going to go get my book of copyright-free images, because I was looking for, uh, I was looking for Victorian bulbs. Victorian bulb illustration, like public domain. And I searched it and I found an illustration I really liked. And I went from that and did change it up a bit. But, um, but then I'm like, I better double check that this image is in the public domain before I post it, even though I changed it a bit. Um, I'm like, I'm just gonna double check. And it was from the 50s, it wasn't old enough. And uh, I should have been more careful when I selected the image. But anyway, so I had painted that and then I had to trash the footage because it, I just felt like it was a little too similar to that to the source material I went from, which was not in public domain. So I was really bummed that I couldn't do that tutorial, but uh, lesson learned, be more careful. So then I went to my uh, copyright free image book and I found some daffodil bulbs and I worked on that. And then I realized I painted like daffodils four times and once in a class. <laughs> I must really like daffodils. I must really be anxious for spring, excited for spring. Yeah, anxious is the wrong word. Anxious is a, is a feeling that I feel a lot and it's not a pleasant thing. Excited is a, is a pleasant thing. I've been anxious because they're, my, uh, one of my daughter's friends is a travel agent and they want to plan the senior trip with their, their friend group and um, it's, it would be in the Dominican Republic in like over a year from now. And um, so deciding whether, um, whether we want to go and um, that's giving me some anxiety. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Just so many choices. You gotta choose a room. You gotta choose whether to get travel insurance. You gotta choose what to travel insurance. You gotta choose, you gotta get your passports updated. You gotta do this, you gotta do that. It's just so many steps and so many choices and it's freaking me out. So I don't know, but then again, I'm like, I'm gonna regret it if I don't do it. But then it's like, I'm gonna be really bummed out if I decide to do it. And then like, you know, we're still in the pandemic and you can't go anywhere. I don't know. I wish I liked to travel. I want to want to travel. That's the thing. I'm. I don't like planning travel. I don't like traveling. When I'm there, I'm usually worried that something is like blowing up or falling apart with my business back home. And uh, then I'm always worried about like missing a flight or flights being bumped. I'm just like, yeah, just the whole thing. And then I don't like being so far away where you have to get there by plane and you can't escape and you can't get home, you know, quickly if something happens. It's just, um, I don't know, I wish I liked it. While I'm there, while I'm there, if I am like laying in the sun, I, by the water, I feel good. But for the most part, I'm like really 
nervous and uncomfortable and I like I bring our I do bring some art supplies and like that's what I do I like to sit outside and paint and stuff especially someplace warm when it's winter and this trip would be in April so it's not even that bad in Maine in April I don't know but then again I don't want to pass on my irrational traveling fears to my children so it's a whole thing I don't know um, it just makes me nervous and I definitely wouldn't let them go without me because you know that's a whole other country and um, yeah, I don't know. I wish I didn't have that. Uh, I don't know why. I've never had some like big trauma on traveling. I've never like had some really bad experience or anything. It's just, uh, I just guess some people enjoy it and some people don't. I wish I did. I wish I really liked it. I, you know, it's like, and I have, I guess I enjoy it while I'm there, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just nervous. I'm just nervous about it. Uh, so hopefully I'll get over that <laughs> in time to secure my deposit. And uh, I don't know. You know, you don't want to pass on your neuroses to your children. And uh, and I have a lot of those little those little anxieties. And I I don't know. It's it's kind of weird, this is awful to say, but like I almost feel where you where nobody could go anywhere for the past year, it's almost been a little comforting because then it's like look at all those decisions I don't have to make. I don't have to decide um, to go somewhere or not to go somewhere. I don't have to feel bad that I'm not going somewhere when I see everybody else's travel pictures. I don't have to feel bad that I am like standing in the way of my family's travel or their happiness or whatever um because i feel very i feel a lot of guilt about that um you know so i mean that's been a little bit of it's like well even if i wanted to i couldn't so it's not like you know it's a, it's i don't have to decide that it's like uh what do they call freedom from <laughs> freedom to and freedom from um yeah that's weird oh this took a dark turn didn't it oh but let's leave on a happy note i i did actually jot down some some uh Oh, did I tell you? I made a marker rack. <laughs> so I was procrastinating yesterday because I was like being a lazy bum. And um, remember how those markers were driving me nuts because it kept falling out of my the rack I was using, which is actually the canvas drying rack that I made for my canvases because I'm going to be doing some oil painting, so I need my canvas drying rack back. And so I had a Nutrigrain box. Um, my son had bought some Nutrigrains and it was like a bulk package and it was like about this big and it had three little boxes in it. So that wasn't big enough to hold my marker. So I took one of the Nutrigrain boxes and I reinforced it with mat board and duct tape and I put that in the center, hot glued it into the center of the big main box. Then I took the other two boxes, put one on top, put one on back on the bottom and I shimmed it with some more mat board and then hooked them, did duct tape around the whole thing. I did mat board around the whole thing and duct tape around the whole thing. This is all with scraps, mind you, so it was like a free project. So, you know, justified all the things that I've been buying on Amazon. Um, and then I put my markers in and it worked out great. And then um, I took out some, I had a bunch of water brushes and the clear blending markers in there. It's like, I need one clear blending marker. I need, I don't need really any water brushes here because I use my, um, I use regular brush and water. So I put those away. I put all my water brushes together in a drawer because it's like if I ever teach, you know, if I were teacher again, teaching again at like a convention, I want to have my water brushes because it's so much easier than buckets of water. Because I've done that. Buckets of water, man, that's that's no way to fly. Get out the water brushes. So I'm doing that next time because the refilling water buckets is is, is madness when you've got like 25 students. It's crazy. Um, and now they're all in one place, and I know I have plenty of water brushes for a full class. Oh my word, I have plenty of everything. This is crazy. I've had a hard time. That's one other thing with the pan. Seriously, I had nothing to talk about today, and I just over talked the length that my camera would record, and it shut off. So I'm gonna finish that thought. I'm actually gonna have to put these clips together. Editing. Ugh, on a Friday afternoon. That's just awful. But it'll be less time than re-recording the whole thing like I did last week and then repeating myself or forgetting what I said. So, um, so anyway, where was I? I don't remember. I could have just stopped it. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. So, um, I do use these markers a lot because I've got, um, a nice variety. I've got, well, let's just go back over there now that we're... <laughs> Uh, I've got this variety of colors. Um, I have all my Tombows in here, and uh, all these markers are juicy. I tested them out last summer when I um, moved into this office. And I like just being able to turn around and grab the ones that I want. They all work well together because these are all water-based markers. I've got my brush markers. Um, I think that it's best to have them all together. Uh, like to These are all my open stock alcohol markers. I like to have them all together because, you know... <sighs> 
you don't need a full set of any one type of marker. You can buy a few in this brand, a few in that brand. In fact, that's pretty smart if you're like thinking you want to have a complete set of one brand to try a couple of a bunch of different brands, open stock and deciding what you want. Like Tombow's and Zig's, you can get open stock. I think all the other ones that I have in that rack, you have to buy in sets. Um, some have smaller sets that don't duplicate, but there's not that much difference. I would just say Tombow's. Go with Tombow's if you want a felt tip, like dual brush uh, water-based marker, because they're so long-lasting. They're expensive, so if you don't want to spend that money, I mean, there's there's a lot of cheaper brands, um, but they've definitely outlasted every other marker that I've used, but they are expensive. Um, but yeah, I think keeping them all together, they're just more versatile. It's like, well, I've got different, I get different brands, I've got different shades, none of the shades are exactly the same, so it just makes sense to have them all together open stock. And uh, that's generally what I'll use unless I have to do like a project for, um, uh, like an article for a client or something like that, and I need to use their product, so yeah, that works for me. Um, <laughs> I did vacuum last week after Sat Chat. I cleaned up, put away everything that I had hauled out for the week. I vacuumed, tied it. I actually took my desk apart. I can't remember why. Oh, because the rug underneath was like kept bunching up with my rolling chair. And, um, and so I took the desk apart. I had to re-figure stuff, pulled the rug out, moved it around a little bit. It was a whole thing, but it felt so good when it was done. I love to reorganize. I think that's why I did the marker project because I was feeling very overwhelmed. I had to write an article and um, there was a bunch of points I had to get into it and I was I just didn't know how I was going to organize it or what I was going to use for a for the artwork. And um, and I just I when I'm like confused and I've got a big project coming up, I just I like to procrastinate and do something else, usually cleaning. So yeah, I've, that mu I must be I must be bothered by something. Probably the potential trip to the Dominican Republic. Um, I think that's probably that's probably why I have reorganized under the bathroom sink, the kitchen sink, and made a new marker rack because I've been like, oh, I don't know, I'm so confused, I'm so confused, I'm so scared, I'm so scared of traveling, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Um, but, I mean, I'm a travel agent for God's sake. It's not like I'm, you know, going on the internet and trying to book a flight, which... <laughs> that's not going to happen. Let me just tell you right now. That's not happening. <laughs> who, who am I? You know, some jet setter? No. <laughs> that's too risky. <laughs> oh, save me from myself, guys. I'm a mess. I'm such a mess. Um, I think I need a new haircut. That's something, uh, that's something else. A lot of people are saying, oh, I love your haircut. It's like it's grown out to the point where I have to curl it because it's just like so unruly. And I'm thinking about bangs because I'm not loving the wrinkles I got going up here and bangs are cheaper than Botox. So I'm thinking I could just... I don't know. I don't think I'm a bangs person, though. I've never been a bangs person. I've always had, like, the hair off my face like that. Because I, and I don't know if I like bangs because I don't like hair on my face. That's why I've been liking it short, because I can just do that or clip it back. Uh, but I don't like it. I used to ponytail it when it was long, but I just looked like, ugh, all the time. Unless I fixed it, and it took so long to fix that um, I only did it for videos. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a bang. I don't know if I can do bangs. I don't know. Let's see. Guys, you tell me. Bangs? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not so sure. I look like a '50s housewife with bangs. Maybe that's not a bad thing. Oh my gosh! Speaking of '50s housewife, I've been watching *WandaVision*. Oh, that's what I can look forward to tonight. Is watching *WandaVision*. That I really would prefer to watch all the episodes at once, Disney Plus. But um, no, I have to wait every week. Like it's the '90s for a new episode to come out. That's a little irritating. I want to binge it. <laughs> so if you actually have not watched *WandaVision* and you have Disney Plus, you can binge. Is tonight the last night? I think tonight might be the last episode, uh, so you could binge it. Wouldn't that be lovely? I might just binge it just because <laughs> I resent not being able to binge it before. I, although, the nice thing about that is that it's like destination television, so like I'll watch that with my husband because he watches like the, he watches some of the Marvel things. I've never been gotten into the superhero stuff, although I did like the Joker movie. I thought that was really good, the most recent Joker movie. I don't think that's the same superhero people. I think that's the other ones, the DC or whatever. Um, but I really like the show WandaVision, and um, I've been watching that every, like, either Friday or Saturday when it comes out, and, uh, like, making popcorn the whole nine yards, and, um, and I like it. It's good. I recommend it, even if you don't like, if you don't like Super Harry's, if you like a little like, Super Harry's, <laughs> Super Heroes, um, because I can totally, I can totally see myself in that character. It's a good thing I don't have super powers, because I would totally go off the rails and, like, be like, I'm making a bubble, I'm making a bubble, and... You cannot come in with your negative vibes and negative juju. I'm in my bubble. I'm coloring in my bubble. Go away. <laughs> I, so that's why that's why they shouldn't bestow superhero powers on me because yeah, I'd be in a bubble. 
<laughs> I'm in this little safety bubble. Nobody can bother me. Um, but yeah. <laughs> what a week. That was pretty productive. I got all my work done. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna reset the studio, which basically means I go through and I put away the things that I've gotten out, like the white duct tape and the markers for the article and just all the different things that I've you know pulled out for projects during the week, I put all those away. Uh, some things, um, my basic everyday supplies live in here and then everything else is out in the storage area, AKA the old craft room, which you know, you probably longingly or fondly recall <laughs> the dark old dungeon. Um, I have quite a full review shelf, I have to say, so I'm going to have to get cracking on some reviews. I did get something fun. Oh my gosh. This was really exciting because um, I had uh, I had emailed my contact at Derwent because I didn't know if these were legit. I had seen these freaking pencils, man. My kryptonite. Speaking of superheroes, nice tie in there, huh? Not the same superheroes, but anyway. Um, I had, uh, boy, I know quite a bit of superheroes for someone that doesn't watch superhero movies. Uh, except for the Joker, that was really good. Um, so I had seen these Chrome Flow pencils. Uh, I think I'd woken up in the middle of the night and this review was playing because a lot of times I fall asleep with the TV. Oh, I always fall asleep with the TV on. My brain is always like buzzing, so I fall asleep with the TV on. I always have even since I was a little kid. So my husband usually, because I go to bed early, and so he'll like come to bed and shut the TV off. And as long as I fall asleep with the TV on, I'm fine. Well, I had woken up and there was a review for it. Chrome Flow pencils playing, and I'm like, I've never heard of that pencil from Derwent. This seems fishy. And so I looked on Amazon and I saw them, but I didn't see them on the Derwent website. So I emailed my contact at Derwent and I said, are these legit or is this like a counterfeit thing? And she's like, no, it's legit. It just hasn't hit America yet. Would you like a set? And I'm like, well, I mean, twist my arm. I'm like, I'm going to say no. Um, so I said sure, and they sent me this set. They they're only available in 24 colors. They lay down so like no pressure and like no pressure at all, and that's how vibrant they are. They were. Oh, hold it to my face. Vanna White. <laughs> she looks good. She still looks good. I don't know how old she is, but man, um, how about she's having? <laughs> she's got she's got the Botox budget. I get the bangs budget. She's probably got the Botox budget. Um, but anyways, they laid down with no effort, and I was thinking, well, that might be nice for um, for folks that want to do color pencil, but they have like wrist issues. So I am going to be putting these through their paces. Also, they're very saturated colors, so I don't think I'm going to need more than 24. I think I'm going to be able to do a lot with these. Um, I'm very excited for those to uh, to try those out, and I have a few other things I really need to uh, to get reviewing uh, things that people have requested. So, uh, so that'll be good. That'll be good. That's another thing. You guys all enable me too. You will request, Lindsay, have you tried this watercolor? Yeah, well, what am I supposed to do, right? I gotta buy it and I gotta try it. I'm not being very frugal. You can call me on it. People do all the time. People will say, well, I know how much it costs. That's not being frugal. Actually, I've got to say, buying the good stuff first is probably the most frugal thing you can do because then you're not going to be wondering and then eventually buying it anyway and then wasting all you, that money and space on stuff that's not that great. Um, if you want to be really frugal about it, you know, buying a small set of higher quality pencils that you can layer and do so much more with is more frugal than buying, spending the same amount of money on a big set that might not be good. Although there are some pretty decent ones, I don't know. And the other thing is though, that I worry about the budget pencils because if they're really, if they get popular, they can be hard to find. And then there is a question about their quality. Um, if companies have to switch manufacturers because they can't keep up with demand, like we saw with the Arteza stuff uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so, yeah. And oh my gosh, speaking of, I've seen they are offering more open stock stuff, which I really like, but the prices are going way up to their more than like what you'd pay for Windsor, Newton, and Sinelli. They have their individual pan watercolors now, but they're so expensive. And I think it's because they're figuring, sh figuring and shipping in the price. Um, and it's probably like an automatic thing. They just figure in a shipping set because they offer free shipping. Free shipping is never really free, guys. No matter what site you're on, it's fa factored into the price. It always is factored in. Um, so, so I think that must be it because like the prices on them are more expensive than like than Sennelier or Rembrandt or Schmincke or Winsor Newton or any of those brands that would be a much better value. So, um, so that's interesting. I'm very curious to see what they're what they've got planned because I've always found their products to be great for the price, but now the prices are really going up. 
I don't know if it's pandemic related or if they've just been trying to build their brand so that they can um, charge more. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I find this stuff. Oh my gosh! I just learned something else that's interesting in the craft world that I can't believe I forgot to mention. Um, Michaels is going to is getting purchased by um, Apollo, I believe, is the company. Um, I don't know what their deal is. I think they own other retail stores, but what I guess what happened is they're buying a bunch of shares. They're going to buy enough shares that they own the company because Michaels was a public company. Now they're going private. Hobby Lobby's private. Joanne's recently went public. I don't know if it was this year or last year. I think it's pretty recent. Joanne's Joanne Fabrics went public. Um, like so people could buy shares of it. So that's kind of interesting. I don't think AC, I think AC Moore was privately owned. Um, before they got bought by Michaels and then closed down. But Michaels has been like gobbling up a bunch of companies and closing them down. They bought um, AC Moore and closed it down. They bought Consumer Crafts and closed it down. Kept the Doris brand. They bought um, Pat Catans and closed them down. They bought Aaron Brothers and closed them down. And now somebody's buying Michaels. So um, I'm really curious because people have been saying that their shelves have been completely bare or their stores have been trashed. Um, and they've been saying it's probably the pandemic or, uh, you know, they can't get their stock in. I don't know. I don't know what the, re we don't have Michael's up here yet. There's one opening later this month. Oh my gosh, what is the date? It's opening up on the 21st, I think. And today is the 6th, I think. So pretty soon. So that should be pretty well stocked if it's a brand new store. So I'll be really curious to go in there and see what they have. But, um, but yeah, I think that's really interesting. I hope, I hope for good things. I hope it means it's going to make this, the, you know, store strong because, you know, we're, we lost our AC more, uh, which surprised me because the place was always busy and they always had great deals. I always bought stuff when I went in there and that's where I spent most of my, you know, art and craft budget actually was at my local AC more store. We didn't have any like local, local stores up here in the Bangor area. Um, so I'm just hoping that Michael's is going to be a good replacement for that and offer similar products and, uh, offer brand name products and, um, have good values. Like, AC Moore did, so maybe this will make them stronger. I cert I really hope it is. I always hope for good things in the um, in the art and craft world. I want people to have options. I want people to be able to go into a store and buy things if they want to and not have to rely online. Um, I've had to rely a lot online. I haven't bought that much. Actually, I just did all my uh, stuff from last year, all my stuff for my tax man. And, um, that could be a reason why I've been stressed out this week. <laughs> uh, and, like, yeah, I was really... I did not spend much last year at all um, when I was going and adding everything up. Maybe that's why I've been feeling a little free with the buying of the craft supplies this uh, this month. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it, because you know this you know AC more closed and then pandemic. Um, and I really wasn't ordering much online because I was trying to use up what I had because I didn't want to take away from somebody that needed to get these supplies or was starting a new hobby. I didn't want to be. Um, you know, be greedy and buying up stuff just to, you know, try it out when people actually need these products and there was like shortages and prices were higher too. Um, but yeah, it'll be really interesting. Uh, who knows? Who knows what's gonna, what's gonna happen? Maybe that's why they stopped. I don't know. There's been so many weird changes this year, but this whole year or last year, but it's been such a weird time this last, these last 12 months. I don't know. Strange. So strange. Uh, but anyway, that's the end. I am not gonna I am not going to use up this <laughs> this second file. This is a long sat chat. I hope you enjoyed it uh, or hope it helped you fall asleep. One or the other. Um, thank you so much for watching, spending part of your Saturday with me. I might do some ice skating. I don't know. We've got uh, the weekend free, so I'm um, looking forward to that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the sat chats. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.